novels. Uh, he's the author or co-author of over 40 books of fiction and nonfiction. Uh, and he is also the uh, the owner of Tree Shaker Publishing. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, Tree Shaker Books Publishing. Okay. Uh, so just uh, establish some norms before we get started. Uh, unless you're specifically responding to or asking a question uh, to Christopher, make sure that you have your microphone muted so that we don't uh, get any feedback or anything on people. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Leroy. Um, yes, I was was actually going to bring up the uh, the Zoom etiquette things uh, to begin with as well. Uh, if you have a question, and uh, you know, I, I don't I don't want to blow on pass or uh, lose the um, lose the opportunity to address something. I'm going to try and make sure I leave some time at the uh, at the end so I can address any specific questions that you guys have. But there is a uh, a little button down on your lower right if you are on a laptop. Um, there's, you know, different little icons, there's hearts and stuff like that. Uh, and there's a, another way to, if you right click, oh, Leroy, do you remember how to, how to raise your hand? Uh, yes. So if you click on the, uh, participants list, um, it'll pop up on the right hand side of your screen mm -hmm. and down at the bottom of that, you will see a button that says raise hand. Uh, and so uh, you can click that and it'll give a notification to Christopher and, and he'll be able to see that. Yes, there it is. I see it now. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can click the chat window down a little button in the middle. And um, I will use that at a couple of times to give a couple of a uh, couple of links that you might find useful. So uh, you can feel free to copy those links um, and, uh, you know, either just copy and paste them into a text document or uh, you can always you can always email me later um, and if you have any questions I'll tell you what I'm gonna put my uh, my eat my direct email right here in the chat window um, I'm usually pretty good at getting back to folks I say usually so uh, I'm leaving myself an out <clears throat> um, but uh, that is my my email address if you need to get one of those links from me or ask a more specific question later you can feel free to send me a direct email um and uh uh and hopefully you'll get an answer uh probably will uh if it's something super complicated and it's taken a while uh just assume i'm doing some research uh trying to find you an answer so um i guess uh uh, without further ado, let me let me ask you guys one question. I see that there are a number of people on here, and I know that most of you guys um, are probably either writing something now, or you've already written something. Um, so uh, feel free to to raise your hand if you want to tell me uh, what your genre is, uh, if you have a title or not, um, and like a tweetable line what your book is about. Um, and I'll give you an example here as you guys are looking for the raise hand button. Uh, alternatively, you could just turn your camera on and, and I'll know that you're, you're want to, you're want to share. Um, but like, uh, one of the things you want to do is have that elevator pitch. Um, and, uh, I have an elevator pitch for all of my books, at least the series, uh, my, um, probably my most popular series uh, is the wolves of the Tesseract. My elevator pitch would be, this book is a female, it, it's like a female version of Percy Jackson and werewolves versus a Cthulhu like monster. Uh, it's an urban YA fantasy novel. Um, anybody want to share what you're writing? Give you about 30 seconds for another uh, for another pitch while you're looking for the button. Uh, um, another example uh, would be something like uh, so I, I have a I have a space western type of series. Um, like uh, I have to say, if you have a Joss Whedon shaped hole in your heart from Firefly's cancellation, uh, this book will fill that hole perfectly. Um, that'd be my Decker's Dozen series. So lovable delinquents in space. Um, all right. So, well, I'm just going to keep talking then. Um, and uh, but you guys can feel free to raise your hand. Uh, you can also type into your chat into the chat window over here what your book is about. Uh, if I know what you're working on, it doesn't even have to be done. Magical realism novel, a time travel, and a powerful tea. I like that. That's very good, Jenny. Yeah. Especially that the powerful tea set, that just sells it right there. It's like, 
That's what sets it apart, having some of those little details. So you can feel free to type in the chat what your book is about. Um, the more I know about what you guys are working on as far as your projects go, um, the more I'm going to be able to help you guys and kind of kind of talk about the things that will be the most important to you. Like uh, if, if I was talking about children's books and none of you guys write children's books, I'm not being helpful. So um, it might be interesting knowledge to have, but uh, ultimately doesn't really do what, I, what I'm here to do today. So uh, let me see. You guys wanted uh, to know, and this is based on Leroy's survey, excuse me, a little bit about um, fiction versus nonfiction. Um, like, uh, and, and this is, and it's a very broad topic. Like um, uh, there, there is actually not a whole lot in common between fiction and nonfiction, aside from the fact that you have a, a cover on the front and the back and words on pages in between. Um, they are very different animals. I write both. Uh, nonfiction tends to be easier to sell. And one of the reasons for that is nonfiction needs to answer a very specific question. Uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, maybe um, my, I have a nonfiction book. Its title answers a question uh, and kind of takes that premise right from the get go. Um, most of my nonfiction is is faith based or uh, or is is based around very specific types of questions. So I, I have a book called Why Your Pastor Left. I spent many years working in uh, in faith based youth work programs and uh, saw saw a lot of a lot of things and and did a lot of research on the numbers on stuff um, on on why uh, there's a high degree of pastoral turnout, why there's a high degree of pastoral burnout. Uh, why, uh, why, why sometimes they just leave and, and we don't really know, know why and all the inner workings on stuff. And if you don't uh, work vocationally at a church, sometimes you'll never know that. Uh, so I wanted to answer some of those very specific questions for people who just didn't know and had that question. Um, one of the things with answering a very specific question is when somebody's looking for an answer to that question, that's going to make your book pop up. Uh, and it's going to be easier to find it. So that's why it's a, it's a pretty easy sell. Uh, also, uh, with nonfiction, if you've written a book about a topic, it's going to look like you are an expert then in that topic. Uh, if you actually are an expert in that topic, then you probably should be writing about that topic and sharing your knowledge. Um, and that's going to lend to more credibility. And it's going to kind of steamroller and ramp up this machine that we call a platform. Um, so we've all heard platforms, you know, we're, we're coming out of this political season. So we all understand that a platform is not just something that you stand on, uh, but it's also the ideas that you stand on. It's the, the party platform, what the party ideas are. Uh, it's also the, um, uh, you know, your, your very specific stumps, your very specific, um, things you're propping up your, your platform is also as an author, your platform is your, um, your mailing list. It's your, Facebook followers. It's the people who follow you on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, Pinterest. Uh, if you're writing a book about, about quilting and that, that's your specialty, you're, you're, you're writing how to guides, you're writing guy, you know, books about your patterns. Uh, I consulted with a guy on a book he wrote about fishing. He'd been a professional fishing guide and wrote for, um, had written for like outdoor magazine for many, many years. And so he was kind of compiling a lot of those old articles and the stories behind them. And uh, um, so he was kind of asking questions about these platforms and like, how do I find people who are going to buy my book? Well, your platform is your people who are immediately invested in buying that book. And, th and this translates across both nonfiction and, uh, and fiction. So I, I, and I told him, I'm like, there are very, there are places where you can go to, um, to sell that book and add people to your platform um, that will respect your expertise in that industry. And I told him, uh, you've got a slam dunk case. If I were you, I would write that book. Uh, I would get it into print and I would go to every single outdoor expo, every fishing show, every boat show that you can find, get a little booth right next to the Lund boats and, and the, um, you know, uh, the, the in fishing magazine guys or whatever, sit right next to there, tell everybody why they need your book. Uh, and while they're at it, sign them up for your mailing list. Cause that's going to be your best possible way to keep in touch. So um, 
with our platforms, we're not just spewing our thoughts into the void. It's not just you're tweeting with no followers. You're, you're actually building relationships. And, and that's, if you're not, because we can do that. We can, we can create an email list. And you guys have, already probably, have all probably been on one like this, where you're on an email list and you're getting a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't matter to you. It doesn't connect to you personally. Uh, and every time you get something from that person, it's, hey, please buy this product. Uh, that's not going to build you any relationships. It's probably going to make your email get sent to the spam folder uh, and eventually will make your, your email list be completely and totally irrelevant because it's not going to get to the people. It's not going to connect to them. So your platform should actually connect uh, with people. And the reason I bring this up is uh, the difference between your fiction and then your nonfiction is when you're a nonfiction, your platform should be based around some kind of expertise that you have. That's going to be the reason why people are connecting with you. They want your knowledge uh, and you're closer to the subject than they are. Uh, for instance, if you were writing, um, if you were going to, if you were writing about Richard Nixon's uh, late night, midnight snacking habits, and you were his chef or were in charge of the pantry, you are the expert on that topic. Uh, and that creates a special credibility, uh, the thing that only you can really answer the question on. And it sounds silly, but I would read the heck out of that book, right? I mean, you might tie, you know, whatever lessons are, are in Richard Nixon's late night snacking habits, however you're connecting the dots, you can go a million different directions with that. Um, and then if, if I were writing a, a monthly email, I would include a little, uh, and this is this maybe covers the topic of marketing, which I'll try to get to a little later. Um, uh, but you could, like, I'd include little recipes, little things that are were maybe, uh, you know, the former president's, um, you know, favorites, things like that. There's lots of different ways that you can build your platform, uh, but you got to keep it interesting and you got to keep it relevant. If all you're ever doing is trying to sell to people, it's not going to work. I have personally unsubscribed to those people before. So, uh, and, and, pro and I've done it wrong before too. So, um, you know, I can't, I can't say I've been perfect on that regard, but I've gotten a lot better over the years. Um, so uh, with fiction and uh, you're obviously you're writing a story and you are the expert, you know, the inner thoughts and workings of all the characters. You should know more th about your characters than you're ever revealing. Um, so you shouldn't just put down every single thought every character has. That's, that's not going to be an interesting book. You're showing uh, the things that are relevant to your story, to the plot as it progresses. Um, but there should be more than, like if you're writing romance, um, you don't need to tell us about, uh, about Vivian's, every one of Vivian's boyfriends and every person that she's ever kissed and every emotion she's ever had about every boy uh, that made her weak in the knees from the seventh grade on up from the time that she hit puberty. And even before that, when she happened to uh, get a kiss from her, uh, you know, from her, her stepfather or whatever. And she realized that this is not the same as it kisses my father, whatever. I mean, there's a million, you don't need to tell every little detail. We don't need all of that back stuff. Um, but you can talk about some of those things to people that are interested and want that data later on. Um, so don't reveal everything, but you are the expert and you do know everything. And the cool thing with fiction is if something's not working, you can just rewrite the whole thing and, and, and yeah, remake the wheel if need be. Um, so I, I know uh, some of the questions have to do with uh, publishing very specifically. Um, hold on, hold on one second. My, there must be something going on in another room because my dog thinks she needs to leave. So if I don't let her out, I'll be in trouble. So um, publishing, uh, how do I get a book published? And how is publishing nonfiction different than fiction? So nonfiction, you are selling to a publisher, you are selling your expertise. You are selling that idea that you have a platform. So um, if, if you are writing about a topic and building an email list, uh, let's say you want to write that book about quilting uh, that we had talked about or, or knitting. Um, I mean, it's knitting and quilting. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's gonna be a big book. Uh, it's gonna, ha gonna have a little of both. That's your, that's your hobby. 
Um, so I, I, if I wanted to write that book and had that expertise, uh, I would be gathering all of my information. I would, I would write an outline about the things that I wanted to be in the book, uh, the things that are, are very interesting to the scene. And you, this is the other important thing is you have to know the scene. Um, what are people interested in as far as the quilting, as far as the knitting? I would be going to conventions and conferences, um, not necessarily with the idea that I'm selling something, um, but you might go there saying, you know, saying I have an upcoming book about this, trying to get yourself booked as a speaker or as an expert, because remember, you have to sell this expertise so that you can sign people up for this mailing list, so that you can sign people up. Um, uh, even, even if it's just so that they become personal Facebook friends, uh, it could be contacts and resources later, but your relationships should be genuine. They should be authentic. Uh, and they should be, uh, they should be collected somewhere, whether, like I said, if, whether that's a, uh, um, some sort of a, a Facebook group or not group, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Group or, or page that you are in charge of, um, so that you're collecting followers, uh, or, and it's even better if you have uh, an email list. And there's very specific reasons for that. Um, there's a book out there by somebody named Tammy Labreck. It's called Newsletter Ninja. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you read any book about publishing and, and platforms, um, if, if, you're, if you're serious at all about being an author and, if, and you've not read Newsletter Ninja, uh, you need to go and buy that today. Uh, I'll give you a link a little later. Um, you can click through on my, uh, on my website and buy it. It's, it's that good. It's like 10 bucks. Um, and it's not boring. Uh, it's very easy and full of practical information, but however you do it, you need to, to get that platform because, um, they're buying your expertise as a nonfiction author. Um, and also if you're writing fiction, still, still get newsletter ninja. The one thing that I wish I would have done as, as an author, uh, was pursued my platform building. Uh, well before I pursued writing, you know, my third and fourth book, um, it's it's that important to gain market traction, and it really does affect and impact every, every aspect of, of of how you operate as an author. So, um, newsletter ninja, get it. Um, but so they're they're wanting to buy that platform, and here's here's what I'm saying: your platform is more important than having a complete book. You're in fact, they might only want to see one sample chapter when you're submitting. So when you, when you submit to a publisher with a nonfiction book, uh, you do not submit, you submit a query like you would do with a fiction book. Uh, but they're going to ask you for a proposal, uh, which is going to have typically um, uh, like an outline. What are going to, what are the chapter titles going to be and what, what's the content of those titles? And they're, they're only going to want to see a complete chapter to know that you can write. Um, they're going to know more importantly, what's your expertise, who's following you, who's reading your stuff. Uh, why should we care? With a fiction book, there's a, a big difference. You're gonna write a query letter, um, which is uh, just a very brief introductory letter that you're writing to the to the publisher. And there's a million places you can search about how to write query letters. You can also find some of that information um, directly on my blog. You can probably find information on both of those topics. Excuse me. Um, here's a link to my blog in the chat. You can go straight there and find uh, many, many, many articles about the um, uh, about this whole entire process. Um, so uh, your your query letter with fiction, though, your book needs to be complete, and they're gonna you're gonna also want to tell them how many how many words your book is. Uh, in that in that blog, you can find different articles. Um, the easy the easiest way to find these articles, by the way, is if you go go to the blog, um, and uh, uh, if you go to the blog and purchase a little book that I wrote um, called the indie the indie author's Bible, uh, let me let me show you here real briefly what that looks like. If you go to my blog, you should be able to see this on the screen share uh, inside the inkwell. If you look over here on this right hand side, this book, this link right here will take you to. Um, the Indie Author's Bible, a DIY guide to start right and what to do once you've begun and beyond. Um, there's also a workbook right here. Uh, if you want to get that, some of the stuff I'll talk about a little later comes directly out of the workbook. Uh, and there's lots and lots of information. This book right here, 
100% of all my articles are on this blog. So you don't feel obligated to purchase it if you're not, um, you know, if you're just kind of kicking the tires. But I will tell you, it is easier to find the articles. To, uh, it's more linearly laid out, whereas these articles just kind of came up popcorn. Um, but if you want to want to find those articles that are very relevant to the writing process, you want to go right down to um, writing author, writing and author tips. You can see there's almost 160 articles about uh, about the writing process, about uh, the publishing process. Most of these relate to the idea of, of independent publishing, um, but some of them do also relate to um, to traditional publishing, which would be through a traditionally uh, a traditional um, press a, a publisher. Um, a lot of publishers that you will see are actually uh, are actually independent publishers um, that are just masking that uh, masking that fact by purchasing blocks of ISBNs uh, because. Uh, there's marketing purposes for that. I won't go into it today because I don't have the time, um, but there are some very valid strategic reasons um, to set yourself up as a publisher, even if you're just going to publish, self-publish your own stuff. Um, so uh, what I was saying though, the idea of, of publishing uh, fiction is that your book must be done and that your book is going to have expectations on page count. And you can find an article on my blog about that. You can find an article on lots of different websites. Um, a novel is typically 40,000 words and above. Uh, you should always, 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 unless your name is Stephen King or Stephanie Myers, um, or, you know, if, if you are mega famous and just having your name is going to cover half of the cover because your name alone will sell over a million copies. If you are, you should probably be the one, you should probably not be on mute right now. Uh, but uh, if, uh, if that's you, um, then you don't have to obey this rule. But for everybody else, uh, you will never get a book published with a traditionally published uh, press if your book is more than 150,000 words. Um, that's a hard and fast rule. Uh, oh, there's only a couple of genres where it, it's expected your book will be in the neighborhood of that length anyway. And that's going to be if your book is a fantasy book or uh, a hard science fiction book. Uh, even space opera tends to be a little less than hard SF, um, but sometimes, sometimes even space opera will you know will get that large. And there's a reason for that, and that reason has to do with marketing and selling. Uh, it has to do with how many how how thick your book is going to be and um, the premium that shelf space is in order to sell. So the idea with a book that's larger than 150,000 words, Stephen King's already going to pre-sell, uh, you know, out of that million copies he's going to sell on day one, he's got three quarters of that pre-sold in advance because people are waiting for it. That's because he has a huge platform. Um, that's his name recognition as part of his platform. Uh, so that means his books aren't going to sit there. They're going to fly off the shelf. Uh, and so that, that uh, space that they're going to allow those couple of square inches of space on a shelf at a bookstore um, is going to have a, va a very high ROI. That's all marketing stuff that's far, far too advanced for what we're talking about today. But um, needless to say, there are reasons. Uh, and your book should probably be, you should probably try and keep your book in the neighborhood of 250 to 350 pages um, and around a $15 to $18 price tag Beyond that, people are just not going to want to take a chance on a newer author. So that's uh, that's maybe a marketing tip that I'm just throwing out there for free. Um, but th they are, when you send a query letter, going to want to know what's the page length of your book. They're also not going to care to see your query letter at all if your book is not complete and if your book is not professionally edited. Now, I don't mean I don't mean uh, your high school English teacher edited it. Um, they want it to be done and done well. Um, on editing, there's two different kinds of editing. There's what's called a line edit. That means it's grammatically correct. Their editors are just fixing your sentences. Um, a developmental edit is going to be somebody who, um, a developmental editor will, will read it and go, you know, this doesn't really make sense for this person's character. You should probably change it this way. It's going gonna, it's gonna to flow better. Your characters will seem more real. Um, you have a plot hole over here. That's just called developmental editing. Both of them are very good uh, to have. Um, some, uh, some editors will provide both, uh, there's a developmental edit, something that if you have a writer's group locally, that will, uh, those guys can kind of function as that for me, I have a, I have an advanced reader team that will read beta copies of my book and provide feedback. 
that's also part of my platform. All of those people are, are also readers who are in my, uh, my email sequence when they, when they sign up, they have the option to get on that list and read stuff, you know, six months or more in advance of it being published. Um, that's something that is very, very helpful to have. Uh, I would rather somebody tell me up front, hey, this part doesn't work or, hey, your book kind of sucks. Uh, you maybe need to go back to square one with it. Um, I'd rather have them tell me that before I publish it uh, then get a whole bunch of one-star reviews on Amazon. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I could, I could tell you stories, but we're, we're going to move on from there. So have your book be done. Uh, follow a query letter online. You can find examples. and Just follow that format. It's tried. It's true. It's what works. And more importantly, it's what's expected by the publisher. So you're going to want to follow their rules. Don't try and break the rules because they're going to look at it and go, ah, this don't work. They're going to throw it out. And I've talked to lots of publishers, lots of literary agents, um, and they'll, uh, so uh, this, this was fun. I went to, I've been to many, many writers workshops and conferences, and they like to get, uh, I've seen this done a number of times, um, very much like, uh, like The Voice or American Idol, you know, when they're like, push the button and that's the X for me, like, no way, you know, if you finish the whole song, it's like, okay, yeah, you're not terrible. Um, so well, they'll get their panel of, you know, three to five uh, professional literary agents, and they'll kind of give you the X or the buzzer at the point on your query letter when they stop reading and throw it away. And I've been to many conferences and seen many, many query letters read. I think I've only ever seen one make it all the way through um, without having a, uh, a rejection. And that's by, by any... So usually they're like at three strikes, you throw the thing away. So once three out of the five literary agents have buzzed in, the whole thing is gone. Uh, and these are real query letters that these people are sending out. Um, they're by participants at the, at the event. So uh, I've only seen one, I think, that's gone all the way through and had a full page read on a query letter. Uh, so uh, just, just so you know, competition is extremely, extremely difficult. Traditional publishers will get hundreds or thousands of query letters per day. They're looking for reasons to throw it away. Um, I would recommend the book uh, Writer's Workshop. Uh, they come out with a new volume every single year. And they, um, they all, in fact, Leroy, does, does the library carry a copy of that? Let me check, I'll get back to you in a minute. Awesome, so uh, every year they release a new volume and they will, in, in every volume I've ever seen, they have samples of query letters, uh, of query letters that were accepted in the last year from authors that used Writer's Workshop stuff to, um, to, uh, uh, to get, their, get their queries accepted and into publishers' hands. So you have relevant, uh, accurate letters that will show you different styles and different, different themes that you can copy. So um, that's a very good book. It's about 30 bucks to buy it. If you buy it in paperback, I think you get a, an annual subscription as well. For if you buy, the, it, it, there's like two versions. If you buy like the Writer's Workshop Plus book, uh, it's maybe five bucks more, and it comes with a, a, a year-long membership, which is worth like thirty bucks to their website. Um, so you can search for databases, find, and look for publishers who are looking for books like you wrote. Um, so you should also make sure if you want your query letter to be accepted, this is fiction and nonfiction, make sure that you are querying. Um, publishers who said that they're looking for books like yours. If, uh, you know, if they say that they, they publish fantasy and science fiction um, uh, and not romance, and you have a romance, but it's got some fantasy or science fiction elements, probably don't send it to them. Uh, it's going to get rejected and it's, it's going to waste time. It, co concentrate all of your energy on getting your book to the people who are going to be the most receptive to it. Uh, Christopher, is it specifically called the Iowa Writers Workshop? No, it's uh, it's a separate one. You know, I think I have a a slightly older copy right out here on my workshop, my uh, bookshelf. Um, And, oh, and, and here's something else uh, as well. This, this is another dog. Uh, it's buried in my bookshelf somewhere. Uh, they, they do also sell genre-specific versions 
of the writer's workshop. So uh, if you write fantasy books, they will have a specific version called the, um, the fantasy writer's workshop. Uh, same thing. If you are faith-based, they have a Christian writers, uh, writers, uh, what did I even call the book again? <laughs> I'm drawing a blank on it. Writers, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Writers workshop. Yeah. Um, so there are, there are, are different options. Uh, and if I'm, if, if I'm, cause I'm, I'm this, this wasn't in my notes. If I'm just uh, pulling this off the top of my head and the book's slightly different, you can't find it. Uh, use that email a- address, shoot me a message and I will, um, I will make sure I get some accurate data and I can even send you a link to it. So uh, I should move on though. We got the clock is ticking here. <clears throat> um, the next thing I wrote down, we had to talk about uh, was uh, time management. Um, real quick. Uh, so yeah, I mentioned Nonfiction doesn't need to be complete. Fiction needs to be complete and in a highly polished, uh, highly polished version by the time you are sending that out. Um, I have an article on that blog. It is the first article in my uh, in my indie author's Bible. It is uh, a freely given away tool that I have done uh, a lot of times. If you've Ever see me speak at a uh, at a writer's conference or workshop? You have probably seen me talk. Um, give this as a handout. Um, I'm looking for the screen share button. There it is. Okay. It's called the uh, uh, a kind of sequential roadmap to getting your book into print now and for no money. It's the it's what I call the thirteen steps. Uh, if you go to my my blog and you just scroll down into the search box to search this blog and you search for 13 steps, you'll find this article. Uh, feel free to print that out, cross them off as you get to them. Um, step number one, write your book. This is not rocket science. Uh, so don't feel like, uh, like this is going to be super intimidating stuff. Uh, you need to get editing for your book. You need to work on your cover art. Uh, and I have articles about all of these specific things as well. Uh, now, let me throw out a word about cover art. Uh, do not, do not do your own cover unless you are a paid professional book cover artist. So, that doesn't mean go find your friend who does some art sometimes. Doesn't mean my kids in art class, I should do, I should let them do the cover. Those are the worst, those are even worse than you doing it yourself because then you can never change them once you realize that your cover sucks. Um, and by sucks, I mean, maybe it's great. Maybe it's good art, but it is not selling copies of your book. Um, I, t- I consulted with one guy and I, t- I told him, here's, here's the problem with your books. Your covers are awful. I, it looks like your kids did them. He goes, well, yeah, my kids, my kids drew these in like the ninth grade. I'm like, there's your problem. You need, if you want your books to sell, you're going to need to change that. And he said, well, this was a thing I did with my kids. I can't change it. I said, then your books will never, ever, 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 ever sell uh, because they don't communicate the genre well. When somebody looks at your book cover and it's not professional and meet industry standards, uh, all the industry standards, by the way, there is an article on there as well. Um, when when it doesn't meet those things, if people can look at it and go, this book is definitely was self-published, was DIY, that some kid's art should be on a refrigerator magnet or uh, magneted on, on your refrigerator instead of on a book cover. Um, what that tells them is that this book is not professional. It's not quality. Therefore, it will not be good. It will not entertain me. It is a waste of my time and of my money if I buy it. So that's what you're telling people um, by not having good art. You could hire a great artist at your local um, your local um, artist guild. Uh, I'm sure you've, you've got different. Uh, um, that's what I'm looking like an arts council. Uh, you can just get a you know get, if you're getting a picture from uh, from a photographer or something uh, that 
does not make, even though that's professional art, that does not mean that's good book cover art. Uh, I have done that before in the past. I spent a lot of money on a great piece of art, but it did not resonate with my readers. And I had to pay for more money. I had to pay more money to go do more art uh, that did start to sell my book. So if you need resources, I can send you great resources on how to get a book cover. It's very, very good for very, very little money. There are people that specialize in this and they'll make two or three covers a day. And, uh, uh, and you can just search through the different covers, tell them which one you like. Uh, and then uh, um, they'll slap your name on it in the fonts that are already there. And then it's yours. So um, there's lots of great resources out there. But uh, your book cover is super, super important. Um, so then uh, you know, write your back cover, your text, including your bio. I have like Mad Lib style fill in the blanks to, to help you write these things in the workbook version of this. Um, also information on book pricing. You want, don't just sell your book and try and undercut people. Uh, I used to work, I used to do these shows with a bunch of other authors that we all sold the same kinds of books and they always did like big show specials and they're like, oh yeah, my book's like 10 bucks. And uh, I started going, you know what? My sticker price is this and I set it at that. I'm going to not discount my book and started doing experiments. I, I started asking for a regular price and just telling people why my book was valuable, why they're going to enjoy it. And uh, I did not see any dip in sales. In, in fact, my sales have, have only gone up. Uh, so I was basically giving away <clears throat> at the end of the, you know, at the end of the day, giving away copies of my book that I could have sold to people that would have appreciated them. So, um, Book pricing is very important. Um, you know, you have your publisher if it's Create Space or Ingram Spark. Uh, you upload your files, you publish it, publish it also in your ebook version. I um, it's, it's as simple as that. Is publish your book, um, start your marketing on your book, keep building your platform, um, and then try and use other things like this, uh, like Amazon Associates, which will help you gain um, a little bit of extra revenue. So I use Amazon Associates and all my marketing stuff. It includes affiliate links, which basically makes makes it so I get a little extra kickback every time somebody buys my book online. Uh, if I sent them to Amazon to buy it or to Barnes and Noble, if I have a Barnes and Noble account. Um, so there are ways, there are ways, because you have to remember that you're not just an author, you are a business owner. Uh, if you are um, marketing your own independent novel. Uh, so there are ways to not leave money on the table because um, every Every dollar that you leave out there is a dollar you can't spend on marketing, on paying back a cover artist, on, on those sorts of things. So um, all those are very simple. That article is free. Uh, and I'm going to post a link here real quick uh, to a video that I did for the St. Paul Public Library. They run an event every year called TashoCon, which is a, um, here's the link right there. Uh, which is a, it's a small comic convention for, for creators uh, and especially for people looking at science fiction and fantasy and genre fiction, which is where most of my fiction dwells, dwells, that's not a word, dwells, uh, <laughs> I just dwell slash live. I made a split second decision on which word to use and it didn't work. Uh, and we've all been there. Um, so this video, it's about an hour long. Uh, this is part two of a video series. Uh, if you're tuning into the um, the storytelling and gaming uh, one that we're going to do at 6.30. Uh, I will be posting a link there to the first part uh, of the video, which has to do more with world building and uh, um, like story craft, uh, which translates into a lot of different kind of gaming things. So, but this one has to do a lot more with marketing. Uh, and I am, I am working on a video series, uh, like an education series um, that I, I, I'm hoping to have it done this spring. Uh, I, I say that, but I was hoping to have it done last spring too. Uh, but anyway, this video would include a lot of different marketing, very specific things on how to build your platform, how to grow your platform, uh, how to how to leverage that to get better sales, uh, get the book into people's hands. Um, and there's kind of a sequential list that it goes across on this, uh, this chart that I made uh, that I think you'll find very helpful. And it's helpful to know that information before you publish your book because that helps you strategize things like a book launch, um, helps you 
strategize how am I going to get my book into the right hands so that people will leave me uh, positive reviews. Because uh, uh, let's face it, right? If you go on Amazon.com and you're like, I heard, I heard about this uh, this book and uh, called Fifty Shades of Mayonnaise. I'm like, click in. I just made that up. It's uh, if that's a real book, that's that's awesome. And I want to read it. Let me know. So you're going on Fifty Shades of Mayonnaise. The first thing you do is not look for one of the five star reviews, right? That's the first thing that they give you. You click. I want to know what the one star reviews are. Who hated this book? Because uh, we all love to know who hated stuff. So reviews are very important because if you look and you go, oh, nobody hated it. I guess I'll buy it. But if you look at it and you go, hey, everybody hated this. Yeah, it must suck. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spend money on that. Uh, that's how we work. Uh, we are herd animals. And uh, be if you're aware of those things, uh, that will help you combat them. Um, so I'm going to give you just a couple of more things. I'm going to open it up to, uh, to questions. I want to talk about time management. Um, consistency of, of, uh, of time and uh, uh, is a note. I wrote consistency of time and a place to build positive patterns. So I mentioned at the very beginning of this, this right here, this is my man cave. This is where I do all of my writing in this chair right here uh, with a, a noisy spoiled dog sitting next to me. Um, I come and I try and write for about an hour every day. And maybe it's not, that's not your timeline. Uh, maybe yours is much more or much less. But I found if I spend uh, a block of time that I dedicate to it and I come and I do it every single day or every other day or every Wednesday, whatever my schedule is, if I make that consistent, I'm more likely to do it. It's the same as working out in a gym. It's the same as um, you know, following a diet or something like that. You have, to, you have to build a healthy pattern and then reinforce that over and over. And then you have to protect that. So if you if we're going to translate this to dieting language, you're like, I'm only, I'm going to swear off sugar. Uh, but you let your friend come over and bring all of their, you know, all their snacks, like, oh, come on, you can have one. And that's, you know, they keep giving it to you and you, okay, I can have one. Well, if you can have one, you can probably have more, right? So uh, if you keep cheating on it, eventually it's no longer a good pattern and the pattern doesn't give you any value. Uh, and you'll find that you'll just stop altogether. So I, I try and protect my time. Because that's it's you have to put in time if you're going to be a right. If you're a writer who never writes, you're not a writer. Uh, so make sure that you're you're doing it. You're doing it consistently, and finding a time and a dedicated space will help. If you always write every week at a certain table at a, your local coffee shop, I'm describing a guy that I know actually, that's that's his thing. Um, you're going to be more likely to get your words down. Just set goals, set measurable, achievable goals, so that you hit them. Like for me, I try and and. Uh, uh, sometimes I'm like, I need to write a chapter a day. Sometimes I need to write a chapter a week. Uh, but almost never am I writing a chapter. I sit down, I have written, I write an outline so I know where I'm going to go for the end of the story. And so now I'm like, I'm just breaking up into scenes and I just need to write a scene. And so I'm like, I'm going to write two scenes today. That's going to be the chapter. Uh, so when you break it down into bite sized goals, you'll find it's much easier to write, to write faster to write consistently, and to write well. Let's see if I had another tip that I wrote down. Um, oh yeah, so plotting is a big one. There are two schools of thought, plotting versus pantsing. A pantser is somebody who writes by the seat of their pants. And a plotter is somebody who wrote down um, your outline. Uh, they wrote an entire plot. They wrote a story arc, maybe like the hero's journey. Um, or something like that, where they're following a story structure that is tried and true and works, engages uh, with readers, uh, or um, not all stories are, are written. So maybe, maybe you're writing a screenplay, whatever it looks like. Uh, so I would uh, recommend plotting very much. My first book took me like two and a half years to write, uh, and I was pantsing it. So if you plot the book, you'll know exactly where you're going. And you'll have a roadmap on how to get there. Uh, so I find that's very helpful. Otherwise, it's difficult to know when you're done. And um, I think that that's extremely important to know. So you, you have a target. Uh, if you don't have a target to aim at, you'll never know when you've hit it. Uh, so for me, that's that's huge. Um, and I found that at the end of the day, if you're a pantser, you have to write an outline anyway. Because if you, uh, when you go back to do your editing, if you're starting to search for 
well, where did this thing happen? I, I needed to change this major event. And now I've got to go back and find everything. I still got to go back and outline it. Like I'm like, I'm in junior high writing an outline of, you know, of uh, uh, some, some book, a hatchet or something, you know, so I can know where the things are, the story beats, just so I can make those corrections. So if I make those, if I make the outline to begin with, I'm, I'm several steps ahead. So, um, and then I use, uh, I use software to help me write. I write some, I use something called Scrivener and Scrivener breaks it up. So you, you can actually have a note card mode. And uh, so, cause I'm writing in scenes anyway, I'm writing the scene on each note card and you can drag and drop them easily to change the, uh, um, uh, change the flow uh, of your story. Uh, so I, I really recommend it as a steep learning curve for it. Uh, but uh, if you find, find software that works for you, that is, that is great. And it's worth every penny. So um, I'm going to, uh, knowing we've got about 13 minutes left, uh, I want to see if you guys have any questions. And uh, while, while you guys, if you want to turn your camera on, let me know you've got a question. I'll try and call on you. I'm going to pop a couple of links on here um, that you might find relevant. Uh, first one here into the chat box. This is a website on Facebook. Facebook is great for connecting authors uh, at all stages, uh, 20 books to 50K. This is a very vibrant and active community of uh, independent authors who um, can pretty much answer any question. However, do not ask any question because it is such a big group. They really, really, really hate wasting time. If you have a question and you think it might be pretty common, if you have any question at all actually, uh, use the search feature within the group uh, to try and find if that question's been asked. Because uh, if you ask the same old question about, let's say you, you want to ask about like, how does how does Amazon.com calculate my my uh, um, my author rank number? It's been answered a billion different times, and a quick Google search could tell you how they do that. Uh, you're they're pr they're probably just going to throw you out of the group right away, and probably you'll never make it past the moderators. Um, and the same thing, there's a few rules like no bashing uh, different sales platforms because there are some that uh, are absolutely the devil uh, and just they're just awful. Jeff Bezos may be him. Um, I won't tell you how I feel about it, but sometimes you got to make that deal with the devil to make your book, uh, get your book out there, you know. But um, anyway, that's a rule. Uh, so make sure you search that. Here is my personal website. And this will click you through authorchristopherdschmitz.com. That'll click you through to either get on my mailing list uh, or to my blog. Uh, you can also contact uh, me through there, ask questions about my book or about uh, being an author, anything like that. Um, and I gave you my, my blog link already previously. And the last one I'm gonna give you here, and then I wanna pause for those questions. Um, if you wanna get on my, my, my mailing list and maybe see how a platform works, from the, uh, from the recipient side, uh, here is a link, uh, the subscribe page.com slash get free Dragon Dice novels. Um, Dragon Dice is a game that uh, the world of ESVA uh, revolves around, which is the, that's the, uh, used to be a TSR game. Um, I have a high fantasy series that revolves around that. There's four books on it right now. If you click that link, enter your email address, it will immediately give you a link to a free book. Uh, the first one in the series, um, and so my, that video that I posted earlier talks about that. How do you get an auto delivery system like that going? It will also send you a message every couple of days or some information on the background that's called a, uh, an onboarding email sequence. So it'll give you a little information as well as get my, my newsletter, which comes out twice a month. So you can kind of see that from the user side. So, um, if you, uh, if you look at it from that way, you might be able to glean a few tips and tricks, uh, on the marketing side. And like I said, I wish I would have done that a long time ago. So we got 10 minutes. Uh, I would love to hear your guys' specific questions and I will answer them if I can. And if it goes longer than 10 minutes, I will stick around.
All right. Well, seeing no questions, uh, I do see some stuff here in the chat. Um, yeah, these I see these are kind of popping up when I was talking about uh, um, when I was talking about uh, cover design, the Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council. So, and uh, I, I do want to clarify that I'm not saying that uh, an artist from the Arts Council would be a, a poor choice. I'm just saying that you want to make sure that you have a um, you have a a cover is going to meet the industry standards and is going to engage with people. So I have actually I have actually hired artists that way, and uh, and had books that do sell well. And what I've done is I've hired cover um, cover designers and then individual artists, and I've given my designer my artist's work and said, hey, can you make this uh, help this work as a cover? Um, and uh, some actually some of my very most engaging covers have have been done that way. So um, let's see here. Uh, Brenda knowledge is immense. Thank you. Uh, my, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to tell my wife that you said that and that she should respect my, my vast intellect. Uh, <laughs> that will earn me no points. Uh, but yeah, if you, uh, if you guys have any questions, you can always email me if they're not relevant here, or if you don't want them, uh, shared in a public forum as well. Um, but, uh, other than that, I, I, I do have time for a couple more if you guys have more. And uh, if you have any specific questions on the resources or you just want to tell me about your book, I'd love to hear it. Otherwise, Leroy, feel free to jump in. Um, sure. Uh, well, thank you very much, Christopher. Uh, you, great. Lots, lots to chew on and, and look through and search out. And um, thank you. I, I think we, we had some uh, people pretty quiet. My my dogs flopped over on the floor over there, <laughs> and yours is taking over. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you so much again for doing this, and uh, we're, we're glad you got to do that. And um, you you are recording, is that right, Christopher? I did record it. That way, uh, it can possibly be be viewed later. Yep. Uh, and um, uh, how would you like to make that available? Are you gonna? link to it and, and we can share it or. Um... Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we can do that. I'm going to probably post this on my YouTube and I okay. will send you a link when we do that, that way you awesome. can make it shareable. All right. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have any final questions here? Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll have a couple people that were in this workshop that we'll see them again uh, at six 30 for the storytelling workshop. And uh, thanks so much again, Christopher and, uh, appreciate uh, all, all your tips and we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you.